It was fortunate for the hero Hercules that he was born in the winter, which gave him plenty of time to acquire strength to fight serpents the following spring. The angry goddess Hera, who possessed a great deal of power, dropped the serpents into the baby's cradle. They slithered through the baby Hercules' blankets, hissed at him, and prepared to strike. Hercules laughed at the silly snakes, coiled up like piles of rope. They laughed at their silly noises, and then he killed them with his bare hands. It was clear that Hercules was no ordinary baby boy. He was the son of Zeus, king of the gods. It was unfortunate for Hercules, however, that Hera was jealous of her husband's affection for his son. Hera wanted Zeus's attention on her. When the snakes failed to hurt Hercules, she came up with another plan. I'll have him use his strength for harm, the goddess said to herself. Then Zeus will punish the boy himself. Hera used her power to coerce Hercules into doing dangerous and dishonorable things. Zeus was disappointed at his son's behavior, and so he decided that Hercules would have to earn back his honor and prove worthy of the gift of strength. Zeus ordered Hercules to serve King Eurystheus. Many dangerous enemies lived near Eurystheus's kingdom, and Zeus knew that a strong boy like Hercules could keep Eurystheus's people safe. However, Hera had other things in mind for Hercules. To be sure that Hercules would be out of the way for a long time, she gave Eurystheus a detailed list of tasks that Hercules could never complete. Hercules went to live among the herdsmen and cattle in Eurystheus's kingdom. A fierce, evil lion lived nearby in the valley of Nemea. Your first task, said King Eurystheus, is to kill the Nemean lion. The impossible mission was Hera's idea, of course. The lion had claws like gleaming swords and teeth even sharper. It could eat a herd of antelope for breakfast and a small boy in a single bite. After accepting the challenge, Hercules watched and waited for the lion to come out of the forest. The lion may be strong, but I am stronger, Hercules boasted. I fought serpents when I was a baby. I killed them with my hands. When the lion emerged, Hercules first tried to kill the lion with his mighty club, but that failed, and so he tried to kill the lion with razor-sharp spears. When no weapon Hercules possessed would harm the beast, the boy wrapped his arms around the lion's neck. Hercules had killed the serpents barehanded, and he killed the lion with his bare hands, too. Hercules beamed with pride as the lion lay dead at his feet. He lifted the heavy body and paraded it through the land. The people cheered and hollered, and they praised Hercules for his strength. Zeus smiled from his throne on Olympus, while Hera just glared. Well, well, she thought. Now what idea can I give Eurystheus? Then she remembered that the Hydra of Argos lived nearby. The Hydra was a monster with nine heads, and one head was immortal. Like anything else immortal, that head could not be destroyed. Hercules had strangled the Nemean lion, but could he destroy the Hydra? You must kill the Hydra to keep my kingdom safe, ordered Eurystheus. Bravely, bravely Hercules accepted the task. He shot flaming arrows at the Hydra, but the Hydra coiled around Hercules' leg. He hit the Hydra's heads with a club. For every head destroyed, two more grew in its place. Finally, Hercules triumphed over all the heads but one. Then, with a little help from Zeus, he destroyed the immortal head at last. Hera was really angry now. In no time at all, that boy will be back in Zeus's good graces, she hissed. I must stop him. Her angry howls rattled Mount Olympus. Her heavy stomps broke holes through the clouds. After several hours, her storming and stomping ceased. Hera came up with a plan. This plan, she felt certain, could not possibly fail. Hera told Eurystheus that he must order Hercules to bring him some apples. Of course, the apples were not ordinary. They were made of gold and grew on the tree in the garden of Hesperides, and a fierce dragon kept watch over the trees. I'm not afraid of that dragon, declared Hercules. I killed the Nemean lion and the Hydra of Argos. I'll kill the dragon while he's sleeping. When Hercules approached the garden, the dragon was sleeping, just as Hercules had hoped. Upon hearing the boy's footsteps, however, the dragon opened one eye to peek at his unwanted guest. Hercules approached the creature, which lay coiled among the trees. The apples hung from the tree's branches. The branches hung over the dragon's head. 
Hercules devised a plan. I'll ask Atlas to give me the apples, he said with confidence. Atlas owned the garden of Hesperides, and the dragons worked for him. Hercules walked for weeks to reach the mountain of Atlas. Atlas had been sent there long ago as a punishment from the gods. Atlas was doomed to spend his life holding the weight of the world on his shoulders. Perhaps, thought Hercules, Atlas could use some help. Poor Atlas, said Hercules, you must be so tired. Won't you let me carry your load for you for a while? I am strong enough to do it. Atlas was overjoyed. He could hardly believe his ears. He dreamed about walking the earth and smelling the flowers once again. He longed to wade through the rivers and streams. I'll be happy to give you a rest, Hercules told Atlas, if you will do one little thing for me. Bring me some apples from the garden of Hesperides. Atlas agreed and left promptly. He walked joyfully over the land. Before too long, Atlas returned. He placed the apples before Hercules and thanked him kindly and prepared to go on his way. The apples are not for me, explained Hercules. I must take them to King Eurystheus. I'll take the apples to him for you, said Atlas, who had tasted freedom and wanted more of it. Hercules was sure he would never return. Oh, would you please take them for me? Hercules begged without missing a beat. I would forever be grateful, but I am not used to this load as you are, and my arms have grown tired and stiff. Would you relieve me just for a minute while I take a little rest? Atlas shrugged his shoulders. Okay, just for a moment, and then I will personally deliver your apples for you, he said. He handed Hercules the apples and took back the weight of the world. Hercules stretched his weary shoulders. He stretched his arms and legs. Then he bid Atlas a fond farewell and left for Eurystheus's palace. Well, well, said Eurystheus when Hercules gave him the golden apples. You are not only strong but resourceful. You've accomplished yet another impossible task. Now Eurystheus was a powerful king, but Zeus was a powerful god. Zeus had the power to grant the gift of strength, and he had the power to take it away. From that day on, Hercules promised to use his strength only to help others. He treated people respectfully and acted kindly at all times. Zeus was pleased with his son Hercules and rewarded him. He brought his son to Mount Olympus to live among the gods. Hercules was now immortal and lived forever on Olympus with a duty to protect the mortals below.